We uh, hopefully have leveled the playing field that there's fears all around. I am deathly afraid of snakes. And should you ever choose to weaponize that against me, it will end me. It's, uh, I'm DNR when it comes to snakes. Like, if I see one, I'm out, just all together. Some of you are like, well, they're more afraid of you than you are of them. That is not true. I can just tell you, like, it's biblical what I'm saying right now. So, uh, have you ever had a moment in your life, in your family, in your career, have you ever had a moment where you just feel like you're going to lose it? Uh, yeah, you had that moment where you feel like things are just coming unglued, uh, like, like you could just flip out or blow a gasket. I'm not talking about like you accidentally stepped on the button of the, of the Halloween robots at Home Depot and they spooked you a little bit. I, I mean like full meltdown, completely overwhelmed, stressed out beyond belief, beyond what you want. Have you ever had that moment where you're just like, I, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't know what's going on here. What has happened to get me to this place? I don't know how I'm going to get out of this place. It feels like the world around me is just crumbling and spiraling all around us. You ever had a moment like that? If you have, you've just confirmed that you're human. I've had moments like that in, in my life. In our family, we've had moments where we just feel overwhelmed, where we feel stressed out. And in that moment, it just is a reminder to us that that we're human. You're not weird, you're not crazy, you're not the only one, you're not the, the one who's struggling while everyone else is just soaring in, in life. And I just wanna tell you this morning, it's okay to feel overwhelmed. It's okay, even in moments, it's okay to, to freak out a bit. Now I know as soon as I say something like that, I, I've split the room in two because half of you are like, finally, somebody says I'm not crazy. And yet the other half of the room is like, well, hang on a minute, we're, we're followers of Jesus. Like we're in church. We, we shouldn't be talking about freaking out in church and saying that it's okay in church, but I'm just here to tell you that as long as we are on planet earth, as long as we're doing relationships with others, as long as we have a heartbeat, there are going to be moments where we feel overwhelmed, which is maybe what's causing you to tune in this morning, which is maybe what's causing you to say, you know what, I, I, you've hit my radar, I, I, I need to hear something because I've just been feeling overwhelmed, because I've just felt like I can't handle this anymore. I've just felt like the stress level is way higher than I want it to be, way more present than I want it to be. And so this morning, I want us to, to unpack because I do believe there is hope wherever you're at. Whatever you've been through, whatever's happened in your life, whatever has led to the stress and the freak out and the meltdown and the, uh, the spiraling in your life, I just want you to hear this morning that there is hope. And I feel like today is this moment that we together can begin to take some steps up that lead us to higher ground. In case you've missed it, uh, these last few weeks have been incredibly difficult. In case you've missed it, you can even zoom out a bit to the, to the last few months. It's been a bit of a perfect storm. Uh, not your run-of-the-mill storm, because this storm has included economic fallout. There's been economic consequences. They're touching people even in the room today. Countless jobs have, uh, in the past several months, just evaporated overnight, where people have lost their livelihood, their income, their sense of community. There's inflation. There's war between nations. There's war within nations. There's conflict. There's brutal terrorist attacks. There's soaring gas prices. And to top it all off, it's an election season. And this isn't any projection because we too in our family have felt the impact of these last few months. Any one of these things by themselves would be enough to cause us to have a bit of a meltdown let alone all of these things happening all at once. And while a lot of this global conflict, a lot of this political conflict may not impact us directly, it has impacted us emotionally. Emotionally, because there's anxiety present. There's worry, there's fear that leads to this overwhelming feeling. And it's fierce 
and it's all around us. It's not just today. It's not just because of the last few months. It's not just pandemics and inflation and war and gas prices and the economy. As long as we call this planet that we live on home, we will experience difficult days. We will experience troubles. We will experience trials. In fact, Jesus himself said, on this earth, you will experience troubles. But take heart because I've overcome the world. So how in the world do we do that? How in this world that's full of difficulties and trials and troubles do we walk through and live through and survive through and dare I say even thrive in the midst of incredibly hard circumstances? Uh, Now let me just say that this morning is, uh, I hope, going to be a moment of some real talk for us. Because there's been a moment or two over these last few weeks, over these last few months, few, last few years, where we might have just spiraled. And, and I want to just level with us and have some real talk because far too often in the Christian community, we want to be quick to pull up this facade like, oh, it's fine. You know what? Jesus has got this. God's got this. Everything's going to be fine. I'm fine. But the reality is in moments like this, it's like trying to float a cannonball in the ocean. It's just not going to happen. I've, I've had conversations with countless people and countless families whose lives aren't yet in the ashes, but there's fire burning all around them and they, they can't even breathe through the smoke with debt, with travel soccer, with busy schedules, with rising tuitions, with uh, rising inflation, with worry and anxiety and fear, and that's true with you as much as it's true with me. It's, it's all of us. We're all in that same boat today, but I believe there's hope. I believe, I'm convinced, I've experienced that there is hope today, and I'm not just saying to you, hey, get over it. Uh, I'm not just saying to you, hey, just trust in God. That's not my message this morning because I, I know that while it may be easy for someone to say that, the reality is it's just not simple. It's not that simple to just let go and let God, to, to just trust in the moment and trusting in God. And so that's not my message this morning because I too have looked in the mirror and had moments of deep despair in our life, in our family, when it feels overwhelming, when there's no light at the end of the tunnel, no bow to put on it. And so I don't want you to hear this morning as any kind of self-help from me. What I want us to do is to dig into the unchanging truth from the word of God. And that's what we're gonna do. If you've got your Bibles with you, you can turn over to Psalm 61. As we're gonna unpack a framework for what it looks like for us to live with hope, for us to walk through incredibly difficult circumstances. In Psalm 61, this is a psalm of David. And I want us to frame it that David wrote this because we know David as a warrior, as a man of great strength. He's a champion. David is the guy who defeated Goliath. David is this man of valor. He's a warrior champion. Uh, He's a shepherd boy who charged after a bear and a lion. Didn't wait for the bear and the lion to come and attack the sheep. No, David went after the bear and the lion and took them out with his bare hands. And David ended up being a king of Israel, a leader of leaders. But David is also a human, just like you and me. And we don't have stories like this in Psalm 61 merely to frame history for us so that we say, oh, that's good for them. Glad things worked out for them. No, this reminds us that this is good for us. This is good news wherever we're at. Now, in this particular Psalm, David is at a moment in his life of great despair. This is a moment in a season in David's life where he's on the run He's been displaced by the circumstances in his life, a little bit disjointed, a little unsure and uncertain. And it's in this season of David's life that he writes this psalm, this prayer to God. And this is what David says in Psalm 61, verse one. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer from the ends of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. 
For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Now, if you're new to faith, if you're just checking out church, if you're trying to figure out if Jesus has anything to say to you, I hope you're encouraged by this text this morning. Because what we see in King David, in this warrior, in this leader of leaders, is we see that wherever you're at, whatever you're going through, there is a God who hears our cry. This isn't a God who's distant, who's far off, who only listens and hears us and engages with us when things are hard. No, this isn't a God who is so far off that he can't even relate to what's going on. No, what we see as we open up this text is that God is present with you wherever you're at and hears you where you're at. You don't have to show up in any certain place. You don't have to show up in any certain posture or position where you get everything cleaned up and picked up and brought up so that you can show up to God. No, this is a reminder to us today that God hears our cry. Just like he heard David when he says, I called to you when my heart is overwhelmed. David, this warrior, this leader, this author, a king, says, my heart in this situation is overwhelmed and it's with an overwhelmed heart that I'm crying out to God. Now, I don't wanna take any liberties with this text, but maybe this was a meltdown moment in King David's life when he says, my heart is faint. Now, this is this Hebrew word, etaf, which underneath this Hebrew word, overwhelmed means to turn. And when you take it and dig around its root, this word overwhelmed, you get the the idea of covering up and to veil or to hide from the light, to shroud in darkness. Uh, It means to faint or be feeble or or, or, or overwhelmed. And it all stems from this root word to turn. It's this phrase that we get when we say, I've taken a turn for the worst. That was certainly where David found himself. He's taken a turn for the worst emotionally in this moment. When the storm came, I I couldn't take it anymore. I took a turn for the worst. It's this meltdown moment. I lost my confidence for a moment. I lost my sense of sanity for a moment. I lost my hope for a moment. And yet, we see that God in this moment, in this meltdown, in this feeling of overwhelmed, is right here with David. And what we need to know is that it is okay as a human being made in the image of God, it's okay for us in moments in life to feel overwhelmed. But in these moments of overwhelm, there are a few things that I want us to to remember. Maybe to remind ourselves. Number one is this, if you're taking notes, it's okay to be overwhelmed as long as you just visit and you don't move in. It's okay in times in your life, in seasons in your life to feel overwhelmed as long as those are moments and those are seasons and those are times you wonder how in the world am I going to get through these moments and these seasons and those times. I'm telling you, it's got to be a stop on your journey. It does not need to stop your journey. Uh, Overwhelm doesn't have to become the address of your life. Uh, Don't don't decorate at that house. Don't move into that house. Don't take all of your mail at that house. Don't start to tell everybody that, hey, I've moved into 2799 Overwhelmed Drive. You can send all of the mail there. You can find me there. You can see where I've moved into Overwhelmed Drive. It's there at the corner of Freakout Avenue and Overwhelmed Drive. Come and visit me there. Now, it's okay if we, if we have these moments in our life where we feel overwhelmed, just make sure that it's a visit, not your end destination. But for some of you, it's been more than just a little turn of the heart. For some of us today, the, the overwhelmed has shifted from feeling overwhelmed to being and living constantly in overwhelmed, thinking that this is just the way that it is. Things are never gonna change. The enemy has convinced us, in fact, that this is just how life is. And so it wasn't just a momentary turn. It was, in fact, moving in to overwhelmed. 
because overwhelmed is your current status. Panic is the new norm. Chaos is the current reality and the current context of all of your life. And I think God is just saying to us this morning, hey, if you just made a turn into being overwhelmed, that's okay. Just don't move in. Practically, what does this look like? It's the difference between being concerned and being worried. Sure, there are things in our life we ought to be concerned about. We ought to be concerned about the fact that there are people that we know, that live on our street, that work in our, in our workplace, that, that we interact with all through our community and all across the globe. There are people in our life who don't know Jesus. We ought to be concerned about that. There are people in our life who don't know that there is a God who designed them uniquely with a purpose. That ought to concern us. Uh, Maybe that even keeps us up at night. Uh, Maybe that's what we think of when we wake up in the morning. It's it's what we leverage our resources to make a difference in our world toward. But there's a difference between being concerned about something and being worried about something. Uh, Worry is is not, hey, there's a real issue that, uh, you know, I, I should be trusting God to help me solve. No, that's not worry. Worry is projecting into the future all manner of scenarios, which, oh, by the way, all of these things that we worry about, many of the things will never happen. But worry is taking something and projecting into the future all manner of scenarios, thinking I ought to spend all of my mental and emotional energy trying to mitigate or solve or change this in some way. Worry is taking today's concern, pushing it down the road a month or so, and then being completely overwhelmed. Worry is having this, uh, such a, a big turn of heart that we end up moving into freak out. Concern is saying, you know what, my kids are sick. I probably ought to be concerned. The concern is, hey, maybe, maybe my job is on thin ice and uh, I ought to be concerned about that. So God, with the, with the decisions that my employer made today, what do you need me focusing on in this moment? That's concern. But worry is something that Jesus has told us not, not to worry. Not in a lackadaisical, over-spiritualized kind of way, hey, don't worry. Uh, but Jesus actually has a response for this. He has it and in this moment when he teaches us how to pray. Jesus says, when you pray, pray like this. Pray, our Father. There's a relationship that we have. Again, not this far off in the distance deity who's just checking all of the morality in your life. No, this is a relationship with a heavenly Father, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. So we've got the relationship, and then we see that God is an amazingly awesome and powerful God, unlike anything else. And so, yes, we are holding the hand of a heavenly Father so that when chaos comes, so that when the, when the market crumbles, when your kids do something that is deeply disappointing and discouraging, when something happens in your life that begins the spiral, we are holding the hand of the creator of the universe, our Father, In heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus doesn't say, hey, give us a month's supply. It's not a prayer to say, make sure all of my cupboards are full. Make sure my pantry's full, my freezer's full. Make sure the garage fridge and the kitchen fridge are stocked and fully prepared for me for the next month and a half. No, you are a manna-giving God. Give us this day, today, because you're our new every morning God. You're the same yesterday today and forever. And God, you're gonna have the same amount in your storehouses tomorrow as you do today. Your inventory, God, does not go up and down because you are God. And so when I wake up tomorrow, I can pray again tomorrow. Give me concern, Lord. Give me concern for today. I'm trusting you to help me navigate the realities of today. I'm asking God that you would build this firewall around my life so that the enemy can't penetrate my life today. 
Sure, I visited overwhelmed for a minute. Sure, I may have had a momentary freak out today, but by the power of God, I didn't choose to move in. And I'm not gonna get my mail at that address. I know it's possible for a lot of us to feel overwhelmed in life, uh, to be overwhelmed by the unknown future, but God is here saying to us today, I'm here for you today. I will give you what you need today. And the beauty of all of this is it keeps us in relationship with our heavenly father. Okay, God, I need you today just like I needed you yesterday. I'm gonna need you tomorrow, but we'll get to tomorrow when we get to tomorrow. But today, I'm trusting in you, my heavenly father, who I have a relationship with. It's okay to feel overwhelmed as long as you visit and you don't move in. Number two, it's okay to feel overwhelmed in life as long as it becomes a step up and not a step down. In other words, if you have that moment where you feel overwhelmed in your life, and you freak out in this moment of feeling overwhelmed, don't give up on the text. Don't give up on the truth of God's word. Don't give up on the God who says, I will give you everything that you need. David says it this way in verse two. From the ends of the earth, I call to you when my heart is faint. In this moment, David is crying out when he's overwhelmed and his heart is faint and his his heart and his life have taken a turn for the worst. He's calling out to you and his prayer to God is lead me to the rock that's higher. God, you are stronger than any weakness that I may have. You are greater than any problem that I may encounter. You are bigger and stronger and greater So don't let me go back to those old patterns, those old habits. Lead me up, so don't let me go back to those old addictions. And I don't even have to go through a list of addictions. When you you think about those moments in your life where you're feeling overwhelmed, what is it that you run back to instead of running up to where God is leading you? And so in this moment, David reminds us in those times of panic and worry and freak out and when we need to blow off some steam, when we feel like we're just gonna lose it all and it's spiraling in this moment, God, I want this moment to be a step up and not a step down. I want this to bring me to a higher place, not drag me back down to that dark place in life. Verse three, he says, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. And so David describes this moment Uh, This place is not a where, but rather a who. This rock isn't a place, it's a person. That person is almighty God. And we're not gonna find any of our contentment. We're not gonna find and experience peace and, and hope. We're not gonna move up and out of this moment of overwhelmed by just figuring out our finances. It's not gonna come when we Uh, figure out life physically. No, it's gonna come. We're gonna experience this when we see that God is our refuge. And so when the turn comes, bring me back, David says, to the rock. When the turn comes, I'm not gonna get down on myself. I'm not gonna beat myself up for, gosh, in this moment, I should have been a better Christian and I I shouldn't feel overwhelmed. No, this is a moment when the turn comes that I'm gonna say, Lord, lead me back to the rock which is higher than I. Listen, it's okay to freak out. If that freak out moment is a moment that wakes us up to say, now I need to take a step back. Think about Peter. Peter was an an apostle, a disciple of Jesus who was walking on water miraculously. And when he saw the wind and the waves, he started to freak out. He started to feel overwhelmed And he started to sink. And he saw the wind and the waves all around him. And then he was up to his ankles and then he was up to his knees and then his waist and then his shoulders. And he started to to, to be overwhelmed by the wind and the waves all around him. And before he knew it, he was chest deep, crying out, Lord, would you save me? I'm going under. You see, what what we see in life can scare us. But what we choose to focus on in our life can completely sink us. And this reminder, the beautiful part of this story is that 
as Peter was sinking, as he was overwhelmed, as he was going under, as he felt like he couldn't do anything else, he cried out to Jesus and Jesus was already right there with him and grabbed him by the hand to pull him up again. That's the choice that we have. It's a choice in that moment of feeling overwhelmed that, that can draw us toward Jesus or it can paralyze us in the moment. And before we know it, we can start to sink. It's okay to feel overwhelmed as long as that overwhelm leads us up instead of leading us back. Number three, it's okay to feel overwhelmed as long as we remember that Jesus is able. Please hear me loud and clear. I know I said it before, but this is not a self-help message. It's not a message of fixing yourself. It's not a message of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. It's not a message of putting the pieces back together when it's all falling apart. And it's not that message because that's not the message of the gospel. The gospel is, in fact, completely opposite of that message. It's a message that says you can't fix yourself. You can't put the pieces back together, but there is a God who is able to put those pieces back together, and he's done it for me, and he can do it for you. This is the message of the gospel that when the moments of life come and you feel out of control, when there are pockets of confusion and, and chaos, they serve to remind us that, you know what, I'm not in control. I'm not in charge. I'm not as strong as I thought I was. I'm not able to manage the affairs of the world and the affairs of my life and the affairs of my job like I thought I was. It's a reminder that I'm not the one who's able, but there is a God who is able. And Christ is in me, therefore I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, which is, which is littered across sporting events. We see it on the eye black. We see it on the, the posters. I can do all things through Christ. And let me just tell you, as an athlete myself, I've run in track. I played a whole lot of golf. And I believe the text when Paul writes, I can do all things through Christ. But I've lost a lot of golf rounds. I lost a whole lot of track meets. Because what we've got to understand in this moment is that Paul was not referring at all to being able to accomplish or achieve anything in life around sports or around uh, accomplishments or music or, or career. No, Paul, when he wrote this, said, I, I've been hungry and I've been full. I've been free and I've been in prison. But what I've learned is wherever I'm at, whatever I'm walking through, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. What we forget oftentimes is this short phrase, in Christ. We forget in the moment when we're feeling overwhelmed, when we start to spiral, when we maybe have a moment of freak out or meltdown or, uh, or, or, or spinning out of control. We forget in the moment this phrase in Christ and we instead try to do it on our own. But we've got to remember in this moment we're reminded that we're not able, but God is. That we can't do this, that we can't handle this that we absolutely need a source bigger and greater. And so we were reminded that Christ is able. Can I just tell you something this morning? Jesus is not looking for superheroes. Jesus is not looking at you expecting you to be some superhero, super spiritual Christian person. You can just take the pressure off of yourself. David knew this in Psalm 103, Verse 13, this is what he says. He says, The Father shows compassion to the children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, and he remembers that we're dust. Jesus isn't expecting us to be someone that we're not. Jesus knows us fully, knows our frailty, knows how fragile at times we can be, and remembers who we are. And so in the moments of freak out, we don't get a slap on the wrist. No, we get instead a clasp of the hand from our heavenly father. And it's in this moment that we're reminded that God isn't expecting us to be perfect and complete. Let me just say this as an aside. No, nowhere in scripture does it say that God won't give you more than you can handle. 
that just makes cute Facebook memes. It doesn't make biblical truth. And we're all about truth from Scripture, not our own ideas. And so nowhere uh, does it say that God won't give you more than you can handle. And so if it's in your life, then you can go and handle it. No, it's not in here. Can I just tell you, there are days in my life where I absolutely can't handle it. There are moments of, uh, the, of feeling overwhelmed, and you'll experience this too, where you're not able, where you can't do it, where you don't have the capacity. But we, rem- we remember that while we're not able, God is. The good news is he's not looking at us and he's not, not, not expecting from us to be a superhero. He's not calling us to be a superhero, but on the flip side of that, it's also true that God hasn't created us to be spiritual wimps either. In fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter four, this is what Paul writes, for God who said, let light shine out of our darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show us that the unsurpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We're afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. God is not looking at you saying, don't ever let me see you freak out. Don't don't ever let me see you lose it. Don't be stressed out. Don't worry. Don't have anxiety. No, that's not what God is saying on the other side. He's saying to us, remember you're a container of the Spirit of Christ. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are human and your frame is frail, but God is strong. So in any storm that you walk through, God is strong and his strength is present in your weakness. In any trials and troubles that you walk through in life, remember that those trials can feel overwhelming, but God is able and willing and present with you. You may be persecuted, but you won't be destroyed. You may be pressed and pressured, pressured and overwhelmed and stressed, but you won't be crushed. This is the promise of the God who is saying to us today, you feel like you're at the end of the rope. You're feeling like, man, I just can't do this anymore. Uh, my kids, uh, my spouse, my husband, my wife, uh, I got my situation, my, my economic condition. We've got elderly parents. We've got uh, troubles at work. We've got difficulties in our community. We've got a situation that feels completely outside of our control. I just don't know if I can make it another day. I don't know if I can carry on. The pressure feels too overwhelming for you. God's got a promise for you today. Just like he has a promise for me today. It's okay to not be okay. It's not a sin to be sick. Your, your illness is not your identity. Your identity is not your difficulty. And do you know what God says to us throughout the gospel? He doesn't say, just hold on a little longer. Just hold on a little tighter. No, he says, let go of the idea that you have to hold on to it all together. And remember... Christ is able. He's able to hold you when you feel like you can't hold on anymore, which is why Paul says that his grace is sufficient in my weakness, that his power is made perfect in my weakness. Paul knew this and reminds us in this moment that we don't have to be able, but Jesus is able. I wrote my doctoral dissertation on surviving leadership in the local church. And every time I say that, somebody chuckles like, oh, that's so funny. What are you talking about? Like leadership in any specter, in any sphere is difficult. Leadership isn't something that's easy. And so I wanted to create this framework for pastors and leaders in local church settings to be able to to not only survive leadership, but to thrive in their leadership And my hope and my drive in writing this was to be able to set up pastors and leaders in ministry for success. But there came a point in my own ministry where circumstances were so difficult and so overwhelming at times that I was reminded by the Lord, I didn't write that for anybody else, I wrote that for me. Friends, I'm not exempt from walking through difficulties. 
Uh, I'm not exempt with uh, wrestling with hard seasons and moments of life, and family, and, and work. But what I've come to know by experience is that God is able when I know I'm not. And so this morning, the gospel reminds us we don't have to hold on tighter, hold on longer. And we just got to go through life with others. We got to go through life on our knees with the Lord. And as we experience what he can do in our life, we begin to trust him and we let go knowing we can't hold it all together. We can't hold our families all together on our own. Can't hold the world all together, our business. But he can. And Christ is able in me. And I'm going to stand back up, and I'm going to stay present in community and take another step of faith, and that step of faith will lead us to the rock that's higher than us. Let's pray. Father, we're, we're grateful for the simple reminder that we don't have to have it all, all put together. That it's okay to have moments where we feel overwhelmed. But God, may we remember that in these moments, you are working and you're with us. You're for us and you're working for our good. And so God, may we, in the moments that we feel overwhelmed, take the next step to remember who you are and what you've done for us. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen.